Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic and Fortean skeptic. For those of you who find that um, uh, standard intro annoying or uh, easy fluff or qualifications, I'm not making an appeal to authority. I'm not even trying to uh, wow you over with what I have with what uh, what I've been uh, education I've had just in order to try to make my point seem more credible. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you some context of which tools I'm using in the hopes of uh, trying to understand the world around me. Um, and if anything, um, these you know the the places where I get uh, the a lot of the info I talk about my textbooks, my uh, you know professors, my other you know uh, even the peer reviewed literature I end up reading as a as a matter of uh, interest you know out of pure interest or what have you. Um, you know, uh, or secondhand info with uh, li references to peer reviewed literature um, is mostly just pure, uh, can be out of pure enrichment. And the bachelor and the stuff that I'm working on in science classes just only helps me understand it a little bit better if you will give me the tools to properly understand the science. But anyway, that's not uh, what my video is about today. My video is about a response, a uh, video response I got to one of my address to the spammer videos. A guy did a video of called sports, uh, where he did uh, sports versus logic. I've forgotten the guy's name now, but anyway, he takes a uh, TI-83 calculator, a graphing calculator, sticks it on the ground, and in, on it he's typed in, he's typed in I choose logic. He then takes a hockey stick and proceeds to bash it, saying that sports wins out over logic every time. Well, I left a uh, good uh, six comment um, uh, rebuttal on his argument about why uh, technology, science, and logic are highly um, are highly necessary for our society, but I'm going to do um, that. But I'm actually going to connect uh, that exact same argument here, as to why, um, if people are wondering why I'm so passionate on this issue, why I'm apparently a geek, why do I even do this when apparently no one cares, then I'm going to answer that question for you. I have here with me a copy from my computer concepts textbook. I had to take a computer science course um, as one of my electives towards my bachelor's. Uh, this is called Tomorrow's Technology and You. It's a general introduction to computer concepts. Let me read you a uh, segment called Living in a Non-Digital World. Uh, and this is what happens because of our system being so fully automi uh, auto um, automated right now. You wake up with the sun well above the horizon and you realize your alarm clock hasn't gone off. You wonder if you've overslept. You have a big research project due today. The TV and the radio don't work. The lights don't work either, so that clenches it. There's no power. But that's not all. The face of your digital wristwatch stares back at you blankly. You can't even get the time by the telephone because the phone doesn't work either. The, the, the morning newspaper is missing from your doorstep. You'll have to guess the, guess the uh, weather forecast by looking out the window. You decide to go out for breakfast, but your car won't start. In fact, the only cars moving are antiques from the, uh, the 1970s or earlier. Dejected, you pull out the camping stove, carry it out to the deck behind your apartment and heat some hot water for coffee. Leaning against the rail, you notice how strangely quiet the city is and wonder where everything is going uh, when, uh, when everything is going to get back to normal. Instead, things go from bad to worse. By, m by noon, the water faucets and toilets no longer work. There is no more fresh water. You spend a good uh, part of the uh, morning where, um, anxiously talking to your neighbors about how all the computers could have failed and what you might be able to do about it. Under normal circumstances, you rarely see most of these people. But this techno crisis seems to have sparked a sense of community in you all. As you discuss plans with your neighbors, you hear popping sounds from the direction of the mall, uh, of the nearby mall. Could that be gunfire? Where are the police? That's just a typical scenario of what we could be dealing with and what we no doubt will probably be dealing with in the next few decades. I hate to bring dire predictions to the lot of you, but this is grounded in real science. Our society is so heavily automated with computers, technology, and science, science and logic, that without it, we are literally in a situation where we could be fearing for our lives. And uh, riots, um, riots, uh, you know, from uh, you know people looting the malls and trying to get fresh water and the like, are only just a start of the problems. From there, medicine go without without modern technology, without computers, without uh, without the logic uh, and the science, without logic and science to be able to support an infrastructure, you lose medicine. Without medicine, you don't have. Any, uh, you know, without modern medicine, you don't have any, bio any antibiotics to fend off existing bacteria. We are already fighting uh, an already losing battle to a certain extent, or a standstill battle against upgrades of uh, various flu viruses, for example. Remember the, uh, remember the influenza epidemic that hit back during the 1920s and killed several thousand people? You know, or possibly even several million worldwide? 
that that uh, that particular epidemic was eventually stopped thanks to uh, thanks to very highly effective vaccinations, which are now still being used today. Uh, here's another one. Uh, you want to know some of the others which are uh, causing? Yes, we've had scares in the medical industry. You want to hear? Uh, you want to hear some others? Um, let me think. Uh, how about the avian flu virus? The fact that that's gone out of control. Um, how about polio? We have we have effectively all but controlled polio. You know, we've effectively destroyed it. And the only samples that are left in existence are a couple in vacuum tubes in uh, you know in some uh, you know at University of California, uh, um, uh, University of Berkeley, uh, uh, um, the University of California Berkeley Davis. Um, which are basically used for uh, testing, you know, just purely for biological testing. The same with the bubonic plague and practically all the all of the diseases we wiped out. There's a couple of samples left uh, laying, hanging around in laboratories. Imagine what would happen if modern medicine went out and some other plague of those levels of proportion came and started hitting us. If we didn't have science, uh, you know, and we didn't have toilets, could you imagine the sewers backing up? Can you imagine the sort of bacteria that would come out into the streets? This is what happens when sewers overrun. When people lived with shit in the streets, that was the sort of time when diseases like the bubonic plague were running around and thousands and millions died. Here's another thing for you. Without science, without an understanding of science, we don't have an understanding of how the world works. And without an understanding of how the world works, we fall back into superstition. I'd like you to read a couple of, uh, I'd like you to watch the video links I posted over here. Without the, um, Without the original video links, uh, sorry, with, with those video, what those video links show you, is a example of what happens when uh, illogic and so, uh, when illogic and contradiction of science go too far. In the video in uh, both in uh, in the video in uh, part one, they talk about a uh, couple of psychic surgeons in London. Um, you know, so, uh, people who um, they take uh, scalpels, medical scalpels, and they give little incisions on people, claiming to push the bad spirits away. Then they put a cotton ball in the cut and send them on their way. They never, they never wash the knives because they don't know anything about bacteria, these particular psychic surgeons. They don't wash their hands in between uh, procedures either. They just simply don't have any medical training whatsoever, even in the basics of hygienics. Two of the patients they tested were HIV positive. That means that they could have effectively been spreading AIDS to all their other people. That means at least several hundred people in the local area who go to them as customers, who will end up, pro who will probably end up getting, uh, you know, who have a potential risk of end up getting, of ending up getting a life, well, basically a fatal disease. They've basically been given their death warrant thanks to uh, lack of logic and not necessarily thinking about uh, the scientific validity of something like psychic surgery, or at the very least of this particular variation of psychic surgery, before even going and trying it out. When you look at any new uh, medical or scientific technique, you check it first. You check the peer-reviewed literature on it. Why do you think, in my case as a skeptic, I am constantly uh, taking a look at the actual peer-reviewed literature, both proponent and skeptic in terms of psi phenomena, and demanding a uh, further tightening of skeptic protocols? You know, I, why, do you, why do you think I'm being so adamant on both sides of this issue? The issue is critical thinking and logic. Not skepticism, not belief, not based on how athletic you are or something like that. It's as simple as that. Would you like some other examples? Um, then tell you what. Stay tuned for part two of this video, where I go into greater detail as to the uh, as to the sort of history that we've had on the planet without science, and uh, you know where uh, where illogic has only uh, bred uh, oppression, contempt, and uh, where uh, logic is actually uh, logic uh, and reason combined with creativity are the two greatest uh, possible gri gifts that humans have uh, and Ironic, and as well, um, the reason that we have to continue uh, exploring the cosmos and, again, effectively further extrapolate science beyond what we have now, uh, or more specifically, apply science in more technology than what we have now, because if we don't, the human race will go extinct. Stay tuned for the next video.